Hello again. Welcome back to your second week. And your second exercise for this week will be to create a piece of fabric that has been pleated with the box pleat. So as you can see here, you can see all the box pleats. And they have been held together with a single stitching line. This right here is the right side of the fabric. And they look very similar on the wrong side as well. Except on the wrong side, you will see little markings being made, lines that will help you press and create this box pleat. So let's jump straight into the introduction part, the tools and materials that you will be requiring to accomplish this exercise. Okay, so before we begin, let me show you uh, the, the tools that you'll need to prepare your fabric for this exercise. So what I have here is an extra piece of A4 paper that I'm going to use to measure the length that I want for my exercise. I've also got um, this exercise that I showed you earlier. So if you expand it by now, you should be um, able to gauge that in order to create a repeating or a repetitive box pleat, you would need to have uh, this pattern, which is half inch and then one inch and then half inch and one inch repeated um, all the way throughout your fabric uh, to help guide you to fold your pleats okay so we don't need this anymore uh, because we already have an idea of um, what kind of measurements we want to achieve the box pleat I also have a um, this ruler here is called a clear ruler all right and this clear ruler is really helpful uh, for your, your pattern making exercises um, because you can actually see through the ruler and it can guide you to draw straight lines in different measurements throughout your uh, pattern, paper pattern and also your fabric patterns. We're going to be using a tailoring chalk for today's lesson. So um, these tailoring chalks, they are washable. So once you have drawn on any of your fabrics and you wash them, they disappear. Uh, you could, there's also a, 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 a more modern version of this, which is um, a, a pen, a tailoring pen. Uh, it has disappearing ink that disappears after a while. Uh, they also have the pencil version. So it uh, depends what you've got for your introduction to uh, sewing techniques class uh, you'll be using either one of these and of course we have our fabric scissors and um, what i have here is calico or muslin um, that i have pre-cut into um, the length of uh, three a4 papers so <clears throat> let me show you here So what you do is, uh, before you begin your lessons, you'll have to take an A4 paper, um, measure it, okay, measure, so we have one here, just slightly do a mark there, okay. So make sure that when you cut um, your fabric, it is cut on a straight grain and that it is not slanted or tilted um, on your fabric okay so this is uh, estimated um, an estimate of three a4 paper lengths on the 
landscape view. So that is the total length that you will need for this exercise here. Okay, all right. The total width that I use here is seven inches. So it is slightly smaller um, in height of the A4 paper. You can go full A4 or you can cut it slightly shorter um, and that's fine um, either way. Um, because later on, once you're done, you'll be putting it and stitching it on top of an A4 hard cut or an A4 art block. All right, you always want to iron your fabrics before you cut them into your desired lengths and sizes. Yeah, um, ironing your fabric is important because um, if you don't iron them, they tend to be a little stretched out and um, because they've been rolled on um, the fabric roll for so long they tend to be a little stretched out so you always want to iron your fabrics before you begin sewing or doing anything to them to make your garments for this exercise you can use any fabrics that you like um, i do prefer using um, a cotton uh, cotton or rayon something that uh, will hold the pleats nicely when you iron them together okay <clears throat> so what i'm going to do here first is before i create my pleats i'm actually going to um, draw them out okay so i will start with a half inch so the full width of this ruler is actually half an inch so I will angle it at um, the 90 degree align it to your fabric it's uh, really important as well that when you create your pleats um, they are drawn on a straight grain and they are um, um, 90 degrees to that line because if not you'll end up having slanted pleats on your garments so according to this pattern here we're gonna go half inch one inch half in one chin inch uh, and we're gonna draw it all the way across our fabric here so i started with the one inch and i'm gonna go half inch next okay And one inch again. So I've marked my lines here on my calico. All right, on my, my muslin. Um, I forgot to note earlier that you should be drawing your lines on the wrong side of your fabrics. So the wrong side meaning um, the side that is not printed on or the the side that is won't be facing the outside okay so the wrong side is um, also known as the inside of the fabric make sure you draw it on the inside so now that we've drawn our lines we're gonna go ahead and go to the iron table and press them uh, to fold them and press them so that they remain um, pleated all right, so you'll be spending quite an amount of time on the ironing board. Uh, make sure you bring your pins with you because once you have ironed each line and folded them, you want them to stay intact um, while you iron the rest of your pleats. So you will be using pins to pin them along the way. So let's move to the ironing table. So here we are. I'm going to start with my first line, which I am going to fold on one side. Got my iron on. Okay, so you want to be as precise as possible with your lines. Um, simply because um, your box pleats are going to meet um, side by side so all the pleat pleated lines are going to meet side by side I've got 
my first line here which I'm gonna fold over okay so what would really help if you can't see the line that you're folding there sometimes um, what we do as well we do a little snip at the end there to indicate where we're going to fold because when you fold it um, to the other side you're not able to see the line so I will use my scissors and at the end there I'm just going to do a little snip about half a centimeter on the line Okay, there you go on both sides and that will help to indicate where I'm supposed to fold when I turn it over okay This one is going to be folded inwards. So you want to make sure that there are no gaps and that's where when you draw your lines and when you iron them you have to be very precise otherwise um, the next pleat is going to um, uh, catch on or it's either going to be too much or too little and it's going to overlap to the other pleat as well so I've got my pin here and I'm just going to pin it Okay, to make sure that they are intact all right if um, you want you could also pin it on both sides and that's the way you pin it um, you have to pin it um, in this direction um, if, uh, if not otherwise if you pin it on this direction it might disrupt your next fold All right so you keep ironing pressing and folding until you've completed the entire piece so I have here um, my fully ironed piece here uh, which this is where I started off with the one inch um, gap all right so your iron piece should look like that <clears throat> as you can see there those are the pins that's holding them down in place uh, there should be no gaps in between so they should be very clean and neat lines like this and if you look at the <clears throat> the edge of it you could see that um, all the pleated lines there that is the wrong side with all your um, um, <coughs> markings on it as you can see the little blue lines is where I made a little mistake earlier uh, with uh, drawing the lines okay so that is your clean and right side now we're gonna use our pinking shears or the zigzag shears, uh, shears to cut off a bit on here 
a bit on here and later on um, we're gonna use the pinking shears to snip off the edges as well so you don't see all this frays okay so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to stitch one side of our pleated fabric here and we're gonna stitch about um, one inch away from the edge of the fabric so okay we're gonna start sewing our pleats um, now before we begin you just want to make sure that all the pins that you have um, are facing the direction where you are gonna pull out from this way towards the right side um, because it won't make sense if while you are sewing you have to pull it out from this side because you'll need your hand this hand to guide your fabrics through okay uh, also make sure that um, all your pins are relaxed um, and not uh, rigidly pinned on to the fabric because then it will cause um, creases and then um, your fabrics won't be smoothly um, sewn through okay so make sure that you're not catching too much and that they are not puckering too much if they are you just want to take them out and repin them a little bit okay you can catch more or you can catch very little and that's fine all right <clears throat> now i've also changed the thread color uh, to a color that matches my fabric that's very important as well especially in making your garments you always want to make sure that the thread color matches the fabrics that um, you are going to sew. On my dial here, I've gone for the straight stitch. And for the dial number here, um, you want to go for a normal stitching um, uh, length, which is um, an average of 2.5 to 3. So for this, I'm going for 2.5. Alright, we're going to stitch one inch away from this, uh, this, the side line here and to know where is your one inch mark, uh, you will find these lines on your sewing machine. They're actually guidelines for you um, to, to sew, um, to guide you of how far apart you want your stitches to be. So we're going to sew um, one inch okay so what you do here is you lower down your needle okay so you want to maybe put your foot down as well so you could see your need uh, where your needle is going to go in so i'm going to use a ruler here and at the one inch mark here i'm just going to find out which line on um, the stitching table here is a one inch mark and in this case my one inch mark is the last line here so you want to give it a measure because um, every machine has different measurements on this metal table here. So we're going to start sewing. Now it's important that um, you do not stitch through your pins because uh, you might end up breaking your needle. Um, and that needle may be stuck in your machine as well. So whenever you reach close to your pins, you want to stop and you take out the pins and then you continue sewing again. Okay. So we're going to start with a back stitch. Okay, and then forward. Go slow. When you're there, um, you want to take out your pin. If you can't take out your pin, you want to make sure that the needle is inside your fabric before you lift up your foot. And that will make it easier to remove your pins. So I'm going to remove two at a time. Okay, put my foot back down and continue. So 
every time you want to lift up your foot, you always have to make sure that your needle is inside your fabric. Because if it's not and you lift up your foot, um, the, the fabric will be able to move positions and your stitching line won't actually end up being straight. you're bold enough to try it without the pins uh, you can go ahead and do it without the pins so once this time once we've reached the end um, you want to do a back stitch again so go about uh, 1 cm to the back and then you're done you lift up your foot Roll it a little bit to get it out of the machine and just snip it away. Alright, I will go ahead and snitch the starting point as well. Okay, there you have it. Okay. There you have it, a beautifully pleated fabric. Alright, so the, the only thing left to do is to trim the, uh, the phrase away and we're going to wait for your zigzag scissors to be purchased uh, before we do that. So that's it, that's the exercise for this week and you're done. Alright, I'll see you next week.